afternoon. I want to welcome our visitors, friends, honored guests. We are so glad to have you with us this afternoon at Central St. Matthew United Church of Christ for this very joyous occasion for the installation of our new pastor, Reverend Philip Bakke. Uh, we have a number of distinguished guests with us today, and I would like to acknowledge uh, and welcome Reverend Douglas Andrews, our conference minister from Houston, Deborah Joseph, the moderator for the New Orleans Association, Reverend Brenda Square from Feature Memorial United Church of Christ, Reverend Paul Pitt, who is chairman of the Committee on Ministry from First Trinity United Church of Christ, Reverend Andrew Greenhall, St. Paul's United Church of Christ, Reverend Darren Harris from Freedom Fellowship United Church of Christ, Reverend Randall Roth from Good Shepherd, uh, Reverend Jay Augustine from St. Paul's African Methodist Episcopal Church, and our very own Reverend Cheryl Kramer, and Reverend Al Eichelman will be assisting in the ceremony today. I want to welcome each of you and so happy that you're here. We also, uh, John, Reverend John Pico uh, is one of the ministers here at Central St. Matthew. So thank you and welcome. Would everyone please stand and open your African American hymn book to page 138. Guide me now, O oh great Job. Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven. 
this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive others who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson comes from the African American hymnal, and it is number one. If you have your hymnals, please turn to page 1. And we will be reading the Old Testament scripture. The Spirit of the Lord is of God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion. To give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Now I know that the Lord will help his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with mighty victories by his right hand. When they were few in number, a little town, and strangers in the land, wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another kingdom. He allowed no one to oppress them. He rebuked kings on their account, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. He is a power of salvation for his people and show steadfast love to his anointing, to David and his descendants forever. The New Testament reading comes from the African American hymnal number 10. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your judgments are like a great deep. You say humans and animals alike, O Lord. I have not hidden your saying, saving help within my heart. I have spoken to your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is firm as the heavens. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord. Your faithfulness is in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can compare to the Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord? May God fear in the counsel of the holy ones, great and awesome above all that are around him. O Lord God of hosts, who is as mighty as you, O Lord? Your faithfulness surrounds you. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The word of the Lord is blessed. Yeah. 
afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm going to bring you greetings on behalf of the 70 other churches of the South Central Conference who are with you in thought, prayer, and spirit this day. Reminded of the words of the Apostle Paul who said, When one rejoices, all rejoice. As you celebrate today the service of installation for your pastor, um, the other churches of the South Central Conference also rejoice with you. So we join in the spirit of celebration with this congregation on this special day. <clears throat> Let me begin the word of prayer. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we are grateful for your spirit that calls us to be your church in this moment, in this place. We are grateful to celebrate with the members of Centros, Central St. Matthew United Church of Christ, as they formally acknowledge their new relationship with their pastor, Phil. We pray, O oh God, that your spirit will be here today as important promises are made, as words are spoken, as the relationship has begun. We know that ministry is more than just one moment or one service. So we pray for your spirit to be upon this congregation and its pastor as it moves into a new era of its future, bringing new spirit, new life, new energy to wherever you will take this congregation. So bless this congregation, bless its future, Bless its pastor leadership, bless its members, and bless its spirit to be the church you want and intend it to be. We ask you now to bless the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts, that they might be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Amen. I'm going to focus today on some very quick readings from the book of Philippians. Um, Philippians 3rd chapter, verses 12 through uh, 14, and Philippians 4, 1. I have learned about ordained ministry, 
you know, the kinds of experiences and learning and wisdom, as Oprah Winfrey would say, some of those aha moments of ministry. It is in these quiet, reflective moments of solitude that I think about the many things that the people and churches and that God has taught me about the joys, surprises, challenges, and burdens and stresses of ministry. For those of us who are ordained ministers of the church, we can each create our own list of what ministry has taught us. You can think of your own experiences and learning in ministry and what ordained ministry has taught you. Phil, I could have, in my own organized, compulsive, obsessive way, created a long list of things that ministry has taught me. I could have written a book instead of preaching a sermon. But today I want to share with you one simple learning about ministry that I hope you will remember the rest of your life and the many years that you will serve this congregation as it's called pastor. It's hard to take all of ministry and reduce it to one simple learning, to one simple encouragement, to one simple exhortation. But this afternoon, I'm going to do it. Using the words of the Apostle Paul, my one simple word of encouragement is taken from the first verse of the fourth chapter of Paul's letter to the Philippians. And this is the encouragement and the advice. Stand firm in the Lord. Simple message to remember. Stand firm in the Lord. Paul is writing to the church at Philippi, uses these simple words of encouragement for them to keep the faith and to be strong in their faith as they experience what any newly organized church would experience. Paul shares that no matter how life unfolds, no matter what they experience as God's church, no matter what disagreements and conflicts and growing pains they experience as a community of faith, he calls them to stand firm in the Lord. Now, I'm not one who will cry in their beer, but like any minister called by God to ministry, I can share a long litany of the ups and downs in the challenges and the moments of struggle in ministry. I can share not only the joy of ministry, but also the other side of ministry, which at times has caused me to question my call, my faith, my commitment uh, to the life of service in God's church, and those moments when I think it might be easier to be a truck driver than to be an ordained minister of the Church of Jesus Christ. Feel as you are so full of optimism and joy and hope for your future in ministry with this congregation, and the joy of this congregation in calling you is evident, there will be times when you need to remember that whatever ministry brings to you, those moments of occasional frustration and conflict and disagreement and wondering why God has called you here, that you will need to stand firm in the Lord. But standing firm in the Lord does not mean a rigid kind of strength of unwavering dedication and unwavering faith that does not allow for some flexibility in ministry. It doesn't mean that you are called to be strong and full of conviction and faith that you can never bend and be flexible and pliable for the many challenges and demands of ministry. Anna Hummel used this image of firm yet pliable strength as it relates to skyscrapers and tall buildings. She talked about her experience as a very young child visiting the Empire State Building in New York City. And she remembers the tour guide telling her uh, that uh, if she could close her eyes for just a moment, she could feel the sway of the building. The Empire State Building, a strong mammoth structure, she could close her eyes and feel the building sway. The building that was solid was strong and solid in its foundation, but it also had the flexibility to allow it to withstand the force and velocity of strong weather and winds and severe weather. I remember myself visiting the Sears Tower in Chicago and being told by one of the guys there at the top of the tower 
The Sears Tower was built to be able to sway some six feet in any direction to withstand the impact of winds and severe weather. And while in Japan two years ago, visiting that country while on sabbatical, I actually experienced a mild earthquake and felt the building sort of sway, go back and forth. Buildings that are built to give and take. Newer skyscrapers are built to withstand the stresses of severe weather and earthquakes and other things that years ago would have caused a building to come tumbling down. What modern-day architects discovered is that in order for the build, to build taller and taller buildings, to build modern skyscrapers, three things had to happen in the way that buildings were traditionally built. First, the strength of the building could not rely on the external walls alone. If you wanted to build a strong building, there had to be a different way for the building to hold its weight. If that were true, taller and taller buildings would need exterior walls up to one, some 20 feet in length and width. The weight of the building had to be moved from the exterior walls to the interior walls to carry the weight of the building. Second, buildings needed stronger foundations. Architects had to, to dig deeper and deeper in terms of building and creating building strength. The weight of taller buildings rested on the internal foundational strength of digging deeper and deeper and not relying simply on the external walls. And third, buildings had to be flexible as they got taller. You couldn't just build a taller building and rely upon the strength of the building to be only strong in terms of rigid materials. Building materials could not only be rigid materials, but also materials that have the ability to bend, to be flexible and pliable when needed. Without that ability, we would never be able to see large buildings of 100 stories or more. Now, when you think of this architectural understanding that in order for a building to be strong, it has to also be flexible, it's a counterintuitive thought. If you're on the 120th floor of a building, I don't think your thought would be, this building needs to be built of flexible, pliable materials. I think your thought is, I want this building to be made of strong materials that can hold the weight and the forces of the wind all around us. Your first thought is, you want this building to be built of very strong, solid, uh, immovable materials that will provide the certainty that the building won't come crashing down. So, Phil, when I share with you the exhortation to stand firm in the Lord, I share these three architectural inspired theological thoughts. First, just as architects found a way to build smaller buildings to bear the weight, uh, not only on its exterior walls, but on the interior walls as well, my word of exhortation to you is to remember that ministry is not all about you. <coughs> the weight of ministry is not on your shoulders alone. You cannot be the exterior walls that bears the weight and the pressures and the burdens of the ministry of this church alone. Remember that in order for the weight to be shifted from the exterior walls, you have to share the load. That the people and the church you are called to serve will be those interior walls, reminding you that ministry is a partnership with you as a spiritual leader of this congregation, and that ministry is a partnership that allows the church, when its weight and burden is shared, to be more than a few-story structure tall, and a building that can soar to incredible heights. In other words, ministry is a shared endeavor. And for this congregation to grow and move forward, you have to understand that ministry is not yours alone. The ministry is not all about you as a pastor of this church. You hold an incredibly important role as a pastor and teacher and spiritual leader. You will be an important strength of this church's ministry. You are called as a pastor to provide a strong, inspired, faithful guidance, leadership, and vision. 
that guidance and leadership and vision is always done in partnership with the whole church. Secondly, as taller buildings found a way to bear more weight by digging down deep, my word of exhortation to you is to always find a way to dig deep. To dig deeper and deeper in your own relationship with God. Without that deep foundation, your ministry might be only a two or three story building instead of a large skyscraper. That spiritual foundation is so necessary to stand firm in the Lord in those moments and experience of ministries where you feel like you are bearing the weight of a hundred story building. Dig deep in your faith. Dig deep in your prayer life. Dig deep in your own devotional life. Dig deep in quiet and solitude as God speaks to you. Dig deep in those moments when you might doubt that God has called you to this life of service and sacrifice as a pastor of this church. Dig deep in those moments when you feel that your leadership and ministry may not be bearing the fruit you want to bear. Dig deep that solid foundation of faith on which the weight of this ministry will rest. And third, as you stand firm in the Lord, be flexible. As super taller skyscrapers is both a strong, solid, and massive, as well as bendable, pliable, and flexible, my exhortation to you is to remember just that, to be flexible and pliable. As a minister, you are called to be a strong leader, to be a solid spiritual presence, to exemplify Paul's advice to be firm in the Lord. But the danger sometimes is in being too strong that can limit growth and possibility in hope. Just as a building would rely upon the, um, just as a building would rely only upon the strength of its exterior walls result in a building perhaps only four or five or six stories. If you rely only upon the strength of your knowledge and academic training, if you rely only upon a strong spiritual foundation, if you rely only upon what you know and think, you will end up with a stunted ministry, which will communicate to those you serve a kind of rigidity of faith that doesn't allow to be flexible and pliable and to be able to bend means that God is still speaking to you. And while you rely upon your own understanding of our historic faith, you also rely upon the leading of God's Holy Spirit. That you are able to learn from the people you serve. Ministry, as you know, is not a one-way street of you only sharing and teaching. But the people of this congregation, Central St. Matthew United Church of Christ, will also be your teachers if you can be flexible and pliable. And to remember that you don't have all the answers and know all the theology um, that there is to be known, but that you are open in that special relationship between pastor and people to always remain um, flexible and pliable. Being flexible means you can be strong and solid as a pastor, allowing for that swaying together with God's people to be God's church. The Apostle Paul knew what it was like to stand firm in the Lord. And as you begin your ministry as the installed pastor of this church, I share these simple words of testimony from the Apostle Paul. Philippians 3, verses 12 through not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Jesus Christ has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have it my own, but this one thing I do. Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, press on toward the goal of the upward call in Christ Jesus. So two simple learnings from that passage. First of all, that Jesus Christ has made you his own. He's made his own every member of this congregation, but as a pastor, you need to be reminded that Jesus Christ has made you his own. 
and that you are called by God to strain forward and to press forward to the upward call of God. And the only way to do that, to do what the Apostle Paul shares, to always, at all times, and at all moments of ministry, stand firm in the Lord. If there's one piece of advice I can give to you as you begin this ministry, it's to do just that, to stand firm in the Lord, Remember who has called you to this place and to rely upon God to give you those moments of encouragement and strength we need to trust. Not in a faith that is rigid and hard, but in a faith that is like very much like a tall skyscraper that can bend and be flexible in the face of adversity, severe pressure, and unbearable weight. In all your days of ministry in this congregation, my word of encouragement to you is to always and at all times stand firm in the Lord. Amen. invite you to turn in the New Century Hymnal to number 885, toward the very back of the New Century Hymnal, number 885 for our profession of faith this afternoon. And as you're doing that, I'll remind you that for 2,000 years, Christians have stood shoulder to shoulder, arm in arm. Despite their differences that are secondary, they have professed a faith in unison and the triune God. And this afternoon, I would invite you with one voice to profess our faith as it's given to us in the United Church of Christ, statement of faith, again, number 885. Would you join me? It doesn't say stand, but Reverend Pitt suggests we stand. Why don't stand together for Let us pray together. We believe in you, O oh God, and trust the Spirit, and out of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and our God, and to your needs you testify. You call the world to the king, created persons in your own image, and set the world each one for the of life and death. You seek the world of love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people.
This time I would like to introduce to you Ed Garudia, the chairman of our search committee, who without his valiant effort and the uh, members of the search committee, we wouldn't be here today. They did an outstanding job, and we are so blessed that we have today with us Reverend Philip Rocket as a result of the work they did. So I keep you know, One of the favorite things that uh, the UCC says when he speaks to me is that God is still speaking. Wouldn't it be a better place if we just listen? I can't say enough great things about the search committee I work with. They strengthen my faith. We work as a team. Um, everybody felt free to express an opinion, but the, the biggest compliment that I can pay in my search committee was that they listened when the Holy Spirit spoke. And they listened and let the Holy Spirit lead. And it was that relationship that led us to Reverend Rocket, and I'm sure into us. So with that, let me introduce this wonderful team uh, that led us to this day. Michael Bucree, Abelda Davis, please stand. Tracy Brayden, Nancy Marks, Walter Schley, Rachel Ricks, and John Dupree. My hat's off to you, and thank you for your review.
And sisters and brothers, we've reached that time in our service where we have an opportunity to give back a portion of all that the Lord has blessed us with. And uh, as I take this moment to invite our ushers forward, who will be collecting. Uh, I'm also going to take a moment to let you know uh, what the offering will be dedicated for today. Our offering today will support the New Orleans Association's Q Seminary Visit. Uh, this is a very new thing for the New Orleans Association. Just a few weeks ago, at our fall meeting, uh, the association voted to support the opportunity for, I don't remember if it's two or three seminary students, three seminary students and one professor to come visit with us in the spring, I believe it's in March of 2016. And so there is a lot of work and of course a lot of uh, financial resources that go into making such a thing happen. So today uh, we will indeed uh, offer that collection toward the Royal Association's Q Seminary visit. Bless the Lord of my soul and do not forget all his habits. <laughs>
You are the giver of all good gifts and graces, and we thank you, Lord. We ask that you pour out your blessings. Bless these gifts. Bless these gift givers. Bless this church as it installs its pastor. Pour out your blessings upon this newly installed pastor. Finally, Lord, use these gifts to be able to have your will be done, that your word may continue to be preached to all the ends of the earth. Bless the New Orleans Association as we bring these seminary students and their professor to be with us here in this great city that we call New Orleans. All of this we offer up to you, God. Moved by your Holy Spirit, we offer this prayer in the name of your Son, our risen Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen.
have come to believe with the eyes of faith and are called to serve you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, the fresh air of the Holy Spirit.